Hello and welcome to this video on Bronsted Lowry bases. In this video, I will show you how we determine which molecule of the two, shown in each example by verses, is the more basic. So let's get right to it. Let me zoom in so we can see what we're doing here. Okay. Okay. This molecule right here contains a potassium ion. And the reason why I say potassium ion is because really this is an ionic bond and not a covalent bond. So this potassium has a positive charge because it's a cation. And this oxygen then has a negative charge. And ionic bonds are just electrostatic attraction between the two atoms in this case. So we also need to represent our lone pairs on this oxygen. So let's do that. I'm just using these squares or these little squares as uh, as lone pairs. And what we see here is this molecule is able to undergo resonance. And you may ask how? Well, this lone pair or this one, it really doesn't matter for the example. So this lone pair can make a double bond right here. And then when we make a double bond, this central carbon right here would have five bonds and we can't have that. So we would need to break this bond and move a lone pair up here. And when we do that, we will delocalize the charge. And what does that mean? That means we'll be spreading out the charge between these two oxygens. So when we, when we, when we have resonance, we are stabilizing the molecule because we are delocalizing the charge. Okay, let's look at this molecule over here. This also has a cation, but this time it's sodium. So we can draw this over here. Positive charge for a cation and a negative formal charge. And I'm not going to draw these electrons over here because it's kind of redundant. This molecule cannot undergo resonance because if we made a double bond right here, we can't break any bonds because this carbon right here implicitly, it's not really showing it, has two hydrogens branching off of it. So we can't go undergo resonance. And since resonance is stabilizing it, that is not more basic. More basic is the one that wants that hydrogen, wants to stabilize it. So this molecule is relatively stable as it is compared to this molecule as where it really wants that proton to stabilize it. So this is the more basic molecule. Let's look at this one. So we have a nitrogen with neutral. We just have some methyl groups branching off of it. Methyl is just CH3. And this molecule over here has a sodium cation. It's not a covalent bond, so I wouldn't put that there. I would just have it like this. We have positive charge because it's a cation and if this has a positive charge this nitrogen has a negative charge and we have some lone pairs on it if we want to represent it and you may ask yourself what is more stable a negative formal charge come on there we go a negative formal charge or a neutral well a neutral is more stable and this is anionic and I uh, let me see if I can let me write this down it's an anion. I don't know why I say anionic. It's an anion. So, anion. And since it's an anion, it is less stable. It has a higher electron density around this nitrogen than it would like to. So, this would be more basic because it wants to get that hydrogen or that proton to stabilize it. So, this is a stronger base because this molecule is more stable. So, let's move over here. Okay, this molecule has a nitrogen, or not a nitrogen, a sodium cation. So let's put our plus right here. We also have some lone pairs on that oxygen. I'm going to once again represent it by these little squares. So let me place these around this oxygen. We can't undergo resonance because there's no pi bonds to, whoops, let me fix that, to resonate with. So what we have here is three fluorines, and fluorines are extremely electronegative. Oh, we can't forget this. This has a negative formal charge. 
and fluorines are very electronegative. So what it's going to do is take these lone pair of electrons and drag them towards them. So they're going to be all pushed over and stabilize that oxygen by decreasing the electron density around it. This is called the inductive effect. But the thing is, the inductive effect is extremely weak. It is not that much of a factor. And since this oxygen has a negative uh, formal charge, and that means it's an anion, and this oxygen over here has a, a hydrogen connected to it, it has a, it's a hydroxyl group, and compare, if we really, we're just comparing relativity between the two, like which, which one is more basic relative to the other, the inductive effect is not really that big of a factor. Since this has a negative formal charge and it's an anion, that's more unstable. This oxygen is neutral. Since this oxygen is neutral and this oxygen has a negative formal charge, this one is more basic. Even though it has the inductive effect, which is a stabilizing mechanism, but it's not that big of a factor to consider. So this one is more basic because it's an anion compared to this neutral oxygen. Okay, let's look at this one. This one's actually really easy. So when we look at a periodic table, which atom is bigger? Sulfur, because it's lower on the periodic table, has more electrons, it has more orbitals and shells and all that quantum mechanics stuff. But sulfur is bigger. So let's represent it like that. Here's our sulfur. Let's draw our oxygen smaller because it's a smaller atomic radius. Okay, so we each have some lone pairs on each of these atoms. So let me once again draw these or really type them in because these are just periods and colons. <laughs> so we have some lone pairs. Let me once again just duplicate these, save some time. Oops. There we go. Okay, so they each have lone pairs on the sulfur atom and the oxygen atom. However, the sulfur is bigger, so what does that mean? We can spread these lone electrons around the atom better than we can do it in this oxygen, because this oxygen is much smaller, so this is gonna be more electron dense. It lets me these are some really bad <laughs> electrons but oh well you get the point since this oxygen is smaller it does not have enough room to spread out that charge and stabilize it this sulfur on the other hand is much bigger we can spread out those charges so that's more stable so what's more basic the more unstable one would be this this uh molecule so that is part one for this video i'll just re go through these real quick so this was uh, more stable, not more stable, more basic because it was a smaller atom. This was uh, more basic because of the negative charge on the oxygen, and this oxygen was neutral. And this molecule right here was more basic because this molecule was able to undergo resonance and stabilize it. And this molecule was more basic because it had a negative formal charge which is an anion and this nitrogen was just neutral so i will make part two with some more examples and i hope this video helped you